92.3 Hello and welcome to Forest Focus with me, Philip Webster. This week we're off to the movies. I visit the newly refurbished Regal Cinema in Fordingbridge, which is now operated by the Fordingbridge Regal Cinema Club. I take a visit to this 1930s Art Deco building and see the improvements and facilities now available. But first, some music to get us in the mood. It's the time of my life from Dirty Dancing. Bill Medley and Jennifer Warnes singing The Time of My Life from Dirty Dancing. The Regal Cinema in Fordingbridge reopened earlier this summer. This beautiful Art Deco building that fell into disrepair has been transformed into its former 1930s glory, providing a truly unique cinematic experience. So take a look at the Regal Cinema. I've come to Fordingbridge. I'm stood outside the cinema now, and I'm here with the manager, Barry Robbins. Hello, Barry. Hello. You're a newly appointed manager here at the Regal Cinema. Um, this is a very old building, isn't it? It dates way back to 30s. 1933, in fact, it opened uh, as a 290-seat cinema uh, for the town. Yeah. Right, OK, so it was a main uh, focus of entertainment in the evenings for the locals of Fordingbridge to come and uh, view films here. What sort of films would they be uh, watching here? Oh, um, a, a whole range of films, for example, Casablanca. You see, we've got a poster outside on the, w on the wall outside the cinema now to remind people of the kind of films that, that were showing at the time. A whole range of films. No, a whole range of films of that era. Yeah, I see the Casablanca poster there, as it used to be, and that really sets the atmosphere for the building, doesn't it? Yes, yes, indeed. And it's, as we look at the building, there's an interesting feature I think I'd like to point out. On the side of the building, there is a metal ladder, which you used to be used by the original projectionists to climb up to the projection room. <laughs> they right. they uh, obviously decided that they couldn't afford to put a staircase internally and gave them a metal ladder and we've left it outside on the building as a reminder of the... Uh, of, of how of things, the used things used to be. Poor yeah. old projectionist. He had to climb all the way up the side of the building to that top window there uh, to, yeah. to uh, do his work up there as a projectionist. Yeah. The building itself looks in extremely good condition. Um, was there much needed in the way of restoration? Yes, uh, a huge amount. In in fact, um, it closed in a, as a purpose-built cinema in, in the mid-60s, 1965, I think it was, and then a, a firm uh, called Branksome China moved in and set up a pottery here, which ran in this building. They pretty much gutted virtually the whole of the interior of the building in order to um, operate the pottery business, but that closed a few years back. And uh, local business, uh, Corintac, very important business for Fordingbridge, uh, an electronics engineering firm, uh, one of the managers of that business had been driving past this building for the last 30 years and had thought, wouldn't it be great to open that cinema again? And also one of the, one of the challenges that uh, the business, Corintec, has and is taking on uh, electronics engineer graduates and finding a place for them to live. So when they graduate from Manchester University, shall we say, and they have their degree and they see there's a job going down in Fordingbridge, well, the problem that they often find is accommodation. Where do they stay? So he thought that he could kill two birds with one stone and acquired the building decided to build the the cinema at the front part of the the building and some accommodation seven oh, flats right. for, yes. okay. for his graduates yep. and that's exactly what he's done so over the last um, year or so as a huge team uh, from Corintec uh, and also local local businesses um, James Babb I think is the the guy that's done all the joinery inside which you'll see when we go inside shortly um, and uh, a local uh, builder uh, Rupert Morell and his team have done extensive renovations. Uh, and you've, Lovely. Yeah, yeah, you'll see that in a minute. Well, that's right, because in its day in the 1930s, it was a really buoyant centre, as we've just described. And, of course, in the end, in the 60s, television put a death to the audiences, didn't it? Yes, it did. It's, uh, you know, many social factors in the uh, mid-60s mid contributed to the downfall of these little local regional cinemas. You know, there's one down the road in Ringwood uh, that also closed. Um, 
Uh, but we are very, very blessed to have this cinema in the centre of Fordingbridge. Absolutely, yes. Restored to back to how it used to be in the 1930s. The Art Deco building looks absolutely fantastic. Well, Barry, we must uh, pop across now this very busy main road here and have a look inside. So we're going into the foyer now, and, uh, well, this looks fantastic. It must be just as it used to be. Is this, is this being renovated as to how it used to be, Barry? Yes, absolutely. Well, this section here, the, the entrance foyer, um, your listeners won't be able to see the fantastic floor we've got here. The tiles, the black tiles, are original. Um, this piece of furniture here, the, 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 the sort of ticket booth, if you like, is an exact copy of what used to be here. Sadly, the original wooden ticket booth was destroyed when they converted it into the pottery. But the original drawings were found, and uh, this was created to those drawings. Amazing, so you've reconstructed it as exactly as it used to be. As it was. And yes, we've ensured that we have period features throughout here. The lighting fixtures, as you'll see as you walk around the cinema, are very Art Deco. Lovely, yes. And all the uh, signage and everything else here, the Regal Cinema here, boldly in front of us behind the uh, main desk. And you've got some posters here from the films you used to uh, show here. Uh, ben Hur, Singing in the Rain as yes, well, Gene that, Kelly. In fact, we, we had a showing of that uh, last week, which was very, very popular. Yes. Right, I'm sure it was, that's right. Good, OK, well, it looks super. Very pristine, very clean, very neat, very tidy. Great. There is one office that there is one room that you can't see at the moment. It's the office. It's, a, it's still the last, it's going to be the last thing that is kind of renovated and, and finished off. Is that, is that your office there? That's my office. Your yes, office. Yes. But you've only been here a, a yes, short time, week, so yes. that you're getting everything as you want to in the yes. office as well. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. OK, let's go up the stairs and have a look inside. Thank you, Barry. Yes. You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. So the first thing uh, we see as we come up the stairs here, there's a little uh, reception area here. In fact, there's a bar here. Yes, Very nice. Now, this wasn't here originally. Uh, this has been added. As we are at the Regal Cinema Club, we decided to install a, a bar so that people could come here before the film, have a drink, um, and then take it into the auditorium and we'll go there in a second uh, and see that but this is another thing that was crafted by um, local craftsmen the bar and there is a story here that, that clock there's a beautiful art deco clock as a centerpiece above the bar which was picked up in auction well, it looks lovely doesn't yes. it it really is genuine uh, well art deco yes. era isn't yes. it and then how bar, does it does it work it does work unfortunately it, it needs to be wound up every week so that's, that's on the list of tasks that needs that's one to of your be jobs done. to do it's is one it of my jobs to do but the bar itself was designed around that clock <laughs> well, right, yes. yes. Well, it's great to reconstruct this um, in the original style uh, with the woodwork. I mean, there's a superb job yeah. done on the woodwork here. It looks Amazing really good. Day, Although it's a cosy little place. The cinema, as it's designed now, is not for 300 people. No, it's, it's not open to the public. It's a cinema club. And you have, what, uh, 30, 30 seats in there? There are 30 seats in there, and we'll, go, we'll take a look in there in a minute. But, but yes, it's a cinema club, and, and we're starting off with uh, screenings on Friday evening, two screenings on Friday evening, Saturday morning, and also uh, two screenings on Saturday evening. And then as our membership grows and as demand grows, we may well put additional screenings on. And of course, you can uh, hire the cinema uh, if you want to, you know, host a party and show a film or, you know, any kind of family occasion. Yes, right, OK. It's a nice intimate little setting as well and beautiful to watch a film. It uh, is, yes. And it's also available for corporate hire. Um, we have full video conferencing facilities set up in there, so um, there's a video camera, um, obviously 30 seats, <laughs> yes. and a huge screen to see the other end of your video conference. Right, so, OK. Uh, so I, I noticed in reception there's a little radio there. Um, was that what they would have had in uh, way back in the 30s? I, I think maybe there's a little bit of poetic license there. It, somebody um, thought it would be a nice feature to have in the uh, in the in the entrance. I entrance. thought it might be because yes. I noticed there's an FM band. Yes, on there it. is an <laughs> FM band. Yes. Okay. The radio man, you would have spotted that. Detail, <laughs> well, I thought it was a yes. neat little radio, yes. lovely little radio, <laughs> other style other as well. Style, exactly. Yes. Everything you see in here, if you look at the lights in the bar here, they are beautifully 
beautifully produced yes. and, and in the Art Deco Art Deco. Style. And looking out from the bar here, we're looking onto a little. Um, well, you've got uh, disabled access here as well. Yes, absolutely, we do. And there's a courtyard area at the back, which is going to be uh, available for the people that live in the apartments behind. Yes, because you've got apartments uh, yes. at the back here, which are under construction at the moment. Yes, yeah. absolutely, that's right. But it's for the electronics graduates that will. Be yes, absolutely. brilliant. Okay, good use of the building yes. then for all sorts of things. Yeah. 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 And there's some lovely posters around here. Jaws as well, the original Jaws poster here. Yes. And you've got uh, Breakfast at Tiffany's, Ori Hepburn. Yes. That's amazing, isn't it? Yes. Isn't it lovely to see that poster? It is, and that's on our schedule in a couple of weeks' time, so we'll be playing that. So, Barry, just before we uh, pop upstairs and have a look at the auditorium, um, let's take a little music break now. What's your favourite film music? Oh, that's a really difficult question, putting me on the spot again. <laughs> but, um, oh, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a huge Bond fan as well, and um, I like... Uh, John Barry um, and uh, many of the other composers that have, have uh, scored for, for the Bond films but I think actually one of the perhaps least favourite films, the one that gets uh, knocked a lot, On Her Majesty's Secret Service um, that's a fantastic soundtrack uh, and, and uh, I think any one of those would, would do me Lovely, we'll pick one from there then, thank you <laughs> Music composed by John Barry from the film On Her Majesty's Secret Service. And that was a special digitally remastered version of that uh, music, uh, which was recorded in 2003. Now, a big moment in our tour of the Falling Bridge Regal Cinema. Let's enter the auditorium. We have a very big, thick door here because this room is sound insulated. Right, so you can have the volume up nice and loud without disturbing the neighbours. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. To turn the lights on. Oh, very nice. The lights have gone up in here and uh, it's uh, very cosy, isn't it? And it's sort of sound deadened. The sound treatment in here is very good, isn't it? You notice yes. that as soon as you come in. Absolutely, yeah. And with the door sealed, you can have a um, really loud war film playing and you cannot hear it outside at all. Obviously, we want to keep the neighbours happy. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's right. Well, it's great, isn't it? And uh, do you have surround sound here? Yes, we've got uh, actually the best in the business. We have Dolby Atmos sound which, right. um, just to give you an idea, the new cinema that's opened in Bournemouth, the BH2 cinema, uh, only one of its ten screens has Dolby Atmos. All the rest are slightly inferior sound uh, systems. But here in Voiding Bridge at the Regal, we have Dolby Atmos sound, which comes at you from all directions, from above, from behind, from the side. Uh, yeah, right. it's so really living the experience really of the movie. Absolutely living in the experience. Uh, obviously, you don't get that if you're watching a classic film, which was recorded in mono or stereo in the early days, but certainly most of the uh, latest films are widescreen, uh, full Dolby Atmos sound, yeah, so and you really do uh, experience it. You, right, you know, okay. Uh, th th it gives you all the full sensation. So a nice compact uh, cinema here, very comfortable seating. You've got uh, area there that puts down your drink as well, which is even yes, better. Indeed, yes. And looking at the screen at the moment, Barry, um, well, we're looking at a grey screen here. Well, that's uh, because the, the masking of the screen is closed, and to, for, for some added sort of theatrical effect uh, b before the film opens uh, we press a button ah the yes revealed. the screen is revealed there we are we have a traditional white screen there wow it's very clever so not curtains but a uh, high-tech screen just moving across there to reveal this beautiful screen is there a curvature on the screen there is a curvature yes it's a slightly curved screen that's optimized for every seat in this in this auditorium this as one? is the sound wherever you sit in here you get a great view and you get uh, a fantastic sound as well uh, now you don't have your projectionist going up those stairs outside anymore striking the arc lamp as it used to be uh, something much more high-tech now can you describe what projector you have here Barry we have a uh, state-of-the-art uh, 4k um, uh, high-resolution uh, projector which produces a tremendously detailed image um, it, we are able to play the very latest uh, titles um, at their highest resolution so that everybody watching sees exactly what the director intended. 
Lover, yes, uh, that's right. So very little is lost in quality through the optics, um, the projection process. Uh, because this is the way that films are distributed now, isn't it? You're not talking about cans of film, no. uh, heavy cans of film. I seem to remember them in the past. This is all electronic now. So how are the films delivered to you? Actually, uh, it's, a, it's a good point you've raised there. We started off by playing them from ultra uh, high definition uh, Blu-ray discs, which play, which, which uh, support the 4K format. But we have just only last week agreed to move forward to installing a film server so that we will download the films electronically and we will um, just play them so we won't actually have to handle any you know, disc or... Right, or, okay, or, or brilliant, okay. Tools, you just so. uh, tap into the server and uh, download the film that you want. Yeah. Absolutely. The other thing that um, we're quite excited about is that we've also decided that we are going to be putting on some uh, live screenings of, um, you know, national theatre productions, um, opera, um, the ballet, and major sporting events as well. It's early days yet, but we've just um, agreed to acquire that equipment that will allow us to put on these special screenings. You know, we've got this incredible resource here in Fording Bridge, uh, and it would be fantastic to allow locals who have their fantastic cinema to be able to come to these major events and, uh, you know, without the bother of having to go up to, to London or indeed Bratislava. <laughs> yeah, yes, right. OK, well, it's, it's a delightful place, absolutely fantastic. <clears throat> How much did all this uh, cost to turn around, Barry? Uh, it's an awful lot of money. I'd rather not say how much it was, but I think I can I can confidently say that no expense was spared in terms of the detail and the the quality um, uh, in the project. Um, as you can see when you look at the detail in here, just the the drinks holders on the side of the indeed yes I've noticed the, those uh, <laughs> are all crafted with the same motif that you'll see echoed elsewhere yes. in the building. Yes. The inlay on the wood um, that, that if we walk down here. I mentioned earlier the video conferencing system. We have a little inlaid piece here, if I pop that. Ah. Oh, nice creak there of a little flat. Oh, so you've got a camera in there. So there is a video camera pointing towards the audience. Yep. Uh, and um, So for conferencing, you have full interactivity. Yes. The other end on the big screen, and they will see a huge widescreen image of everybody in the room. Oh, so super, yeah. It's a little bit like Skype, but of greater yes, quality, uh, of course. Uh, yeah, very Much high great. quality. Yep, yeah, exactly. Ideal for conferences. Um, well, it's a very cosy little place. Lovely, isn't it? Very intimate area to view films here. Uh, the yeah. type of films that you're showing as well, or well, modern films as well as some of the uh, older ones, the classic films, coming through as well. What aspect ratio? Do you maintain the original aspect ratio? Uh, yes, I'm a bit of a film purist and we, you know, there's, we do have some uh, conversations in the office about um, giving people the, the whole widescreen experience, but I'm of the opinion that um, making a film that was shot in the traditional 4x3, almost square format, to, to make that stretch across the screen you've either got to distort the image by stretching it so thin people suddenly become wide uh, or you've got to chop a bit of the picture at the top of, and the bottom of the image so wherever possible we 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 show it in its original uh, form. Well I think that's very good because uh, when you do see films that have been treated for a 60 by 9 format sometimes there is something you've, you're watching the film and you're thinking there's something a little bit odd about the aspect ratio here yeah. something doesn't look quite right because they've yeah. been stretched or cropped. We, sh we show 4 by 3 which is the square of format, the traditional formats that films like Casablanca would have been shot in, 16 by 9 which is the widescreen television format, you know, slightly wider, and we also show 2.35 to 1 which is the super ultra wide um, format, so it's the full width of this, width is it? Width of this yes. screen. And 2.35, uh, would you get a black bar top and bottom no, on no, that? That's, is that, that's, that's these, this, that is what the screen, screen is? The screen is 2.35 to 1, so when you watch, what, when you watch a film at 16 by 9, nine the masking guides will come in those little curtains that we heard at the beginning and just crop left back, and right or and they will crop left and right so that you're only looking at that that part of the screen oh, yeah. fantastic yeah. absolutely fantastic well yes indeed fantastic we're just going to take a short break now uh, for some of James Bond's deadliest one-liners well he's certainly left with his tails between his legs <laughs> some of Bond's deadliest one-liners back now to the Regal Cinema in Fording Bridge and my interview in the auditorium with manager Barry Robbins tell us a little bit then Barry about your background you mentioned about f you being a film purist so what's your connection with film in the past then uh, only just I, I 
only just loving watching films and uh, talking about films with uh, friends and family but to know my background I actually used to work for a uh, a big bank on the outskirts of, of um, Bournemouth for oh, about right, the bank years. right I see a bank here okay slight yeah. change of uh, no, job no, I then in, <laughs> I was in technology and operations um, and I uh, left there um, a couple of years ago and decided I want to do something different I joined an engineering firm in uh, Paul, who decided that they wanted to relocate their operations up to Hull, and I decided that, no, no, I don't think I want to move away from this beautiful yes. part of the world, and uh, opted to stay down here. Then I got involved with the Regal Cinema when I heard it was launching and became a volunteer, uh, and very soon soon after being involved um, I heard that there was a, a, an opportunity to come and supervise operations here at the the uh, the cinema yes I so what You're a beautiful right. job what You're a beautiful right. job to do it's, it's a lovely place to work in it's uh, modern uh, well as I say modern is restored back to how it used to be a very much art deco feel to it but in a luxurious style as it used to be really to be able to uh, operate this cinema with all the beautiful films you're showing here it must be a fantastic pleasure it's a hobby as well isn't it yes absolutely i you know i i'm incredibly lucky um but i also have to mention i mentioned the fact that i was a volunteer we are run by volunteers and you know we could always do with more volunteers so if any of uh, your listeners are um, keen to join become a member of the the cinema uh, there are details online at our website which is um www dot uh, the regal cinema dot org org at the end uh, you'll find the sort of application process on there and there are different levels of membership that's to become a member in order to buy tickets uh -huh. yeah but if you want to become a volunteer as well uh, if you get in touch with me via the website then we have uh, for every screening we have volunteers that are manning the bar man managing front of house and also running the technology getting the films queued up and ready and making sure that the sound quality is right and, and everything, everything goes smoothly on the night. Everything goes smoothly, yeah. So we want to make sort of make it, uh, you know, a, f a fantastic experience. Do you yeah. sell ice cream and popcorn in the interval? <laughs> we do sell uh, ice cream and popcorn. Um, we've got we've got boxes and boxes of popcorn. We probably bought a little bit too much, but <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> I'm sure you'll get through it. Um, so yes, uh, just to reiterate, really, that this isn't a public cinema. It's not open to everybody. You have to be a member of the club, the Fording Bridge Regal Cinema Club, to actually view films here right. and is there a cost in joining yes there is there are different levels of membership starting at 15 pounds if you're a student um silver membership uh or 25 pounds um entitles you to buy two tickets uh 35 pounds entitles you to buy four tickets so you can become a member and then bring friends with you uh, yes, that's, lovely. That's, that's okay allowed. and you can hire as you said before the whole cinema for a private uh, function as you wish uh, yes you can do you can uh, you can hire it outright we're also going to be introducing a an interesting uh, feature called my favorite film uh -huh. where if you really want to see your favorite film on the big screen you'll pay a hundred pounds you'll get 10 tickets so you can invite your friends etc and then the regal will also sell the remaining tickets so it kind of underwrite the cost of it because for every film Lovely. that we show here we have to pay a licensing fee yes i'm sure so they're copyright fees, covering yeah. our covering our costs but, lovely um, okay well that's a very cost effective yes. way of getting your favorite yes. film viewed in a beautiful cinema like this yeah. <laughs> that's super well okay well you know just down the road at ringwood of course the regal in ringwood is uh, trying to get funds to restore the regal there as well uh, you were very lucky that uh, you had a company here corintec who were able to step in and help out and restore this building and uh, create a small cinema here which is a uh, very neat and compact and of a great asset to fordingbridge and i hope that uh, things will go in their favor as well could I just make one final point? I really wanted to thank... There's a huge team that's involved in this. I've mentioned a few of the craftsmen and the builders, etc. But there are one or two people um, kind of in the office, in the back office. And there's one person, I think, in particular, um, Emma Goddard, uh, who's the secretary of the club, who has sweated blood in setting up the society and um, really establishing what we have today. Uh, and she deserves a special Excellent. mention. Yes, that generally behind projects like this, as a prime mover somebody that's really get dedicated and uh, uh, to move the project on and it's a big project and of course there have been lots of uh, problems to resolve along the way i'm sure but the end result looks fantastic here so barry just before we go what's your favorite film 
Paul, put me on the spot. Well, actually, I admitted it to all our, our members in a recent newsletter. It's a, one of Steven Spielberg's lesser-known films, Empire of the Sun. Ah, oh, right. Yes, uh, which was based on J.G. Ballard, the author's um, early childhood out in... Uh, and China. what appeals to you about that film particularly? I just think it's beautifully shot. It has a, a great cast with uh, a young Christian Bale, uh, John Malkovich is in it, um, and a, quite a few other well-known people. It features lots of aeroplanes as well, which I'm, I'm very fond of uh, aeroplanes. The P-51 Mu Mustang uh, appears in that. Beautifully shot, and I think it's... Um, you, you leave the cinema uh, kind of with your jaw open at the end. I, I can't give away the ending, obviously, but... Um, but it's, I think it's a fantastic performance from a young Christian Bale, um, and uh, it's, it clearly indicates what he's, you know, what he's capable of. Right. And we we see today, you know, as Batman and all the other roles that yes. he's been in, he's an Lovely. incredible actor. Well, I can still tell you're enthusiastic there, Barry. Yeah. So thank you very much, Steve. Barry Robbins, manager here at the Regal Cinema in Fordingbridge. It's a great little place to come. Join, become a member here. Uh, you won't regret it. <laughs> Absolutely. Looking forward to see you uh, at a future screening, hopefully. Thank you. Well, that's music from Empire of the Sun by John Williams. The restored Fordingbridge Regal Cinema is a must-see. The quality of the restoration back to as it would have been in the 1930s with a true Art Deco feel is really amazing. The auditorium is plush and the quality of the sound with Dolby Atmos and 4K video enables you to watch films at their best and in their original aspect ratio. It's a compact cinema with just 30 seats and is, as we've just heard, now operated by the Fordingbridge Regal Cinema Club. There's a small membership fee to join. Check out details on their website at theregalcinema.org. And many thanks to manager Barry Robbins for showing me around. Well, Mr. Burns had done it. The power plant had won it.